I am pleased to congratulate and welcome the first place winner of the sustainability category, Geotectura, Axelrod Grobman Architects, NCA, Asa Aharoni Consulting Engineers, and their work on the Porter School of Environmental Studies. The Porter School of Environmental Studies is the first of its kind in Israel and among the greenest projects in the world. It implements a range of green principles and ideas. The Porter School in the Tel Aviv University is the first LEED Platinum certified project in Israel that achieved 92 points and above in the LEED certification. The eco-conscious design is reflected in the eco-wall that produces the entire energy source for the mechanical ventilation of the building, saving energy and reducing carbon emissions to create, create a positive working environment for all the students and the researchers. The project is a living lab of ecological and social values for the community and the environment. The tools used in this project enable the team to make early design decisions, smart material choices, do prefabrication, and reduce material waste all on time and on budget. And now, here to tell us more about this project is the team that made it possible. Thank you. Join me in welcoming them. Thank you. Hi, my name is Yehoshaphat Aaroni, but it's too complicated, so just call me Shafi. It's much easier. I'm the mechanical engineer in uh, Project Porter, and I'd like uh, to take you in this couple of minutes to a short tour in the building. It's a very unique building, very special, and we are very proud of it. This uh, building on top of the hill uh, is, is the house of the environmental department of Tel Aviv University. This is uh, a building of uh, uh, th three floors, an uh, area of uh, about uh, 4,000 square meter, and uh, is a lead platinum as mentioned. Looking from the project from the side, this is the west facade, and later on, my colleague, uh, Professor Yasha, an architect, uh, will explain more about the facades, but looking from the side, you can see the floors. Uh, there are lecture rooms on the ground floor, there are offices on the two upper floors, and the, on the roof, there is the machinery. The building is divided, actually, to three places. The offices on the left side, in the center, the lobby, and on the right, you can see the echo wall, which is a kind of structural frames that are holding the uh, evacuated solar tubes that generate the energy for the building. The uh, echo wall is also a place for research and studies. This project was aiming uh, the highest uh, score possible fr from the beginning. That was one of the targets of the donator. Her name is Shirley Porter, and she insisted that this would be the greenest building that was in the program from scratch. So a lot of technologies were implemented into the building, especially the air conditioning, my, my side, in order to save energy. Some of the technologies are thermosolar heat, cooling and heating. This is, we'll be look at that a little bit later with the evacuated tubes uh, operating an absorption chiller. Uh, units in the rooms, which are called chilled beams, they are more common in Europe. Um, they spread the air to the room with no fan. Uh, we have a very high performance envelope to save energy. The lobby itself has a thermoactive slab. It means that in the slab, embedded in the slab, there are plastic pipes. In winter time, we send their hot water, we all know, hitting the floor. But in summer, we send chilled water and we chill the room with a heavy mass of, of the floor. 
We also have a lot of uh, air. This is a place, a ventilation, our ventilation amounts are huge to that building. This is an educational place. People need a lot of oxygen, a lot of uh, uh, fresh air. So we penetrate to the building, introduce into the building a lot of air and when it leaves the building, uh, it passes through air handlers on the roof and transfer the energy through a heat recovery wheel to the entering air. We also have in the building natural ventilation system, meaning that the building is built in such a way that uh, sometimes we can create a lower pressure in the upper level and get air movement in the building due to the shape. This building is a living lab and a research on ecological subjects is done there. On the roof, we can mention the green wolf. Uh, we'll have a photo of that beautiful roof very, very, very shortly. This is the uh, south facade with the uh, 34 rectangulars, uh, white stuff that inside we have the evacuated tubes. In the center, the nose that you see is a meeting room. Later on, Yasha will speak about this floating meeting room and how BEAM helped to create it. We have the thermal solar collectors on the facade, but in order to have more efficiency, we have these collectors also on the roof. Looking from inside of the building on, on these evacuated tubes. The vegetated roof and beyond look on Tel Aviv. In the entrance to the building, we have uh, pools with special vegetation that filter uh, what we call uh, uh, the gray water of the building. These water, after being filtered by the roots of the plants, are being used to uh, irrigate around the building. I'm passing the mic to my colleague Yasha to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Shafi. Hi. So I'm one of the three architects of the team, Nir and Yossi sitting right here. And I'm not going to talk about you know, the lead or the uniqueness. I'm going to talk a little bit about the design uh, with emphasis about uh, generative design and the facade design. So uh, if you look at the facades of buildings, uh, in many cases, they're all the same. You get the same facade, east, south, west, and north. We decided to uh, act differently. Our facade is different for every uh, orientation. And Shafi mentioned the, um, the echo wall. Oops. Uh, and the echo wall, the one with the solar uh, uh, rectangulars, is, al is also a plug-in plug mechanism. You can actually take one out. Instead of a balcony, you can put uh, uh, a lab. If you look hard enough, you'll see the three of them have already a lab. Uh, university buildings tend to grow or shrink according to the staff, so basically you can enlarge and decrease the building. Uh, the uh, western facade uh, is the class facade, classroom and offices facade, so we uh, took care that it will be shaded until 4 p.m. every day until they all go home. Uh, and the uh, northern facade is uh, very open, no sun in the northern facade in Israel as opposed to the eastern facade where we have a highway with 70 decibel noise and a very harsh sun in Israel. So it's very close except of one interference uh, of a room that's coming out. The, uh, in terms of beam, I mean, we use it all. We use Revit. We scan the building and discover that we have 30 centimeters of uh, inaccuracy. And we had to use beam to correct the facade in order to have a straight line. Uh, we used cost estimation, and then we uh, fabricated uh, the, uh, we call it the capsule in the middle, which is a meeting room. 
basically, it started off as a kind of a joke. We did the facade without it. Then we look, you know, why design? We said it's boring. And there was a bowl in the office. We said, okay, why don't we put it there? We were missing a place for a meeting room. And then somehow it evolved with it. But it was interesting to design it because we had to think of a way how we transport it from the uh, fabricate, from the uh, where it was uh, fabricated to the side of the building, thinking about the height of bridges and thing, the, the sizes of truck, which we usually don't do. And of course, we did all kind of analysis, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, what I do like to mention is, uh, uh, this is how it looks in, from the interior. So basically, around this capsule, the entire uh, building is kind of uh, circulated. Uh, in terms of uh, generative design, we use two sorts of generative design. One, very, very basic one, like this one. I'm a professor in university also, and I hate when students fell asleep on me. So I decided to make noise in the background, which goes and settles to the front. I think it helps. So that's what you see in the background. Uh, make students look at me. Uh, and, and then in terms of software, as I mentioned, we use all of that, but we also use, um, uh, as architects, CFD and uh, software like SoundCloud, because we are sitting on a highway to basically carve the building. I mean, as an architect, usually you have the uh, uh, urban plan limits, and then you start designing the building. Here we have the urban plan limits, which basically carve the initial shape of the building, but then with this simulation, sound simulation, wind simulation, and, and these help us to make the initial form of the building. And from then, we started designing. So this is an example of the sound simulation. That's an image of the capsule from the outside. That's the image from the inside. And I have a long story about how it was fabricated, uh, how these lines were fabricated, but I don't have time. It's an educational building, and it's the first lead building in Israel, so um, we bring students to learn about it, but we also did a, a, a VR software that people outside of the school can learn about it, see the different layers, and enjoy it, and learn about sustainability. And uh, this is the Western facade in the entrance. Thank you very much.